Power 106.7. Live and direct. Let's go. Hi, Kim. How are you this morning? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I've wanted to talk to you or your dad or somebody in your family for so long about this case, and I'm, I'm really glad we have the opportunity to do this. Hey, sure. The anniversary of when your brother and Nicole Simpson were killed is coming up, correct? Right. June 12th is the observation of my brother's death, yes. When you first found out that this happened, did you think that O.J. Simpson had anything to do with this? Uh, no, because I had no idea who he was, and um, I'd never heard of him before. Um, and it wasn't until the DNA portion of the criminal case that I actually believed that he was the one. And that pretty much put me right over the edge. Now, exactly what did they say during the DNA portion that sparked it to let you know that he definitely did this? All of the blood and fibers pointed to him and his guilt, and that all of the blood belonging to someone that killed two people was where it was supposed to be to point to his guilt. And my brothers and Nicole's evidence, you know, and their fibers were where they should be, connecting them to him. It was like one in seven billion or something that it could have been anybody but him. But we had 12 idiots say he was not guilty. We had 12 people that were totally disconnected from the facts and evidence in that case and that ultimately acquitted him, yeah. Do you think a celebrity had anything to do with him getting off? Of course. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that before we even started that case, we were up against something that was larger than life. And um, I didn't, like I said, you know, I didn't know who he was, so I didn't, I didn't really realize how much that was going to play a part early on. But very quickly, um, it was very clear to me that his, his fame was going to set us worlds apart from the verdict. I will never forget watching the trial and seeing your dad in that courtroom and there was just something so powerful about your dad sitting there. Did your dad ever talk to you about wanting to jump over the railing and just take OJ out during the trial? Well, obviously we were both feeling a tremendous amount of, of grief and anguish and confusion because there was so much going on at that time that it was hard to understand. It was, you know, we'd never experienced the loss of anybody, let alone the the justice system. Um, I mean, yeah, there were definitely days where it, it was overwhelming, but um, ultimately, obviously, that's not the type of people that we are. So you just you maintain and you contain it and you find healthy ways to let it go so that it doesn't eat you up. If you just tuned into the program, it's Double J in the morning. We're talking with Kim Goldman, who has a new book out. It is called Can't Forgive My 20 Year Battle with OJ Simpson. Has OJ ever apologized to you? No. Do you think he ever will? No. Now, if he apologizes, don't you think that would be basically? him admitting his guilt? Um, yes, I do believe that. I also believe that he wrote his confession in the If I Did It book that we published a handful of years ago. Um, but that's, you know, something from his mouth specifically to our family will never, that will never happen. Now, your family has tried to stop OJ like every time he's tried to make money off of this murder, whether it's through a book, movies, etc. What would you say to the people that say basically you're doing the same thing now with your book, basically trying to make money off their death? Uh, I would say that I don't believe that. I think that I wrote this book because it's cathartic and it's healthy and it was an opportunity for me to share a story that captivated this country, um, but also it's about healing and overcoming and what people do in the face of adversity. And I'm proud of who I've become and all of the work that I've done in the victim advocacy world. And I wanted to share my story. And if people are upset with it, then they don't have to buy it. That's okay. Free world. When the verdict came out not guilty, you were obviously shaken, upset. What did Christopher Darden and the other prosecutors tell you and your family? What did you guys talk about? At the end of the criminal case, we all went into the DA's office um, and just broke down. I mean, everybody was very upset and emotional and in shock and felt, you know, I personally felt very disappointed and, and um, betrayed by our system. But, you know, Chris and Marsha and the entire team, they worked really hard to pursue who they thought was the killer and all the evidence presented itself to be in support of that. So they felt, you know, that they that they let us down and Starden and I are still friends and he still carries that weight with him and I feel terrible for that because I don't think it was their fault but we just all huddled close and cried and, and you know kind of shook our heads in disbelief. Did you ever have to convince people that OJ was guilty? I definitely know that the media perpetuated this, this split between our races and I do believe that that happened but I didn't I didn't experience that on a daily basis. Um, there are still people that feel that he's that he's not guilty because he was acquitted um, you know and that's fine. I just happen to believe that he is and so when the conversation come up. If I feel like I'm in the mood, I'll debate the evidence. If not, then people are just entitled to their opinion. That's what makes the beauty of all 
all this and having about all of us being able to watch it on television and come up to your own conclusion. When you found out that OJ got arrested for the robbery in Las Vegas, I'm sure that was a relief for you, correct? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I felt a little giddy when I heard that story break. Um, but, you know, I feel wholeheartedly that because we were so active in our pursuits with the civil verdict for such a long period of time that I think it drove him to the brink. Um, and then when we published this, I did a book on the day that he broke into the Vegas room. I think those things are connected. I mean, part of us getting that civil judgment was that we wanted him to be punished for the crimes he committed and that he was found responsible for committing. So the only way to make that happen is to pursue the judgment. And we, we did that for a really long time and still continue to. How much of the $33.5 million your family was awarded has OJ actually paid out? Um, well, we were awarded a portion of the $33.5 million and to date is now with interest it's worth well over $40 million and we've received less than 1%. Uh, do you think OJ acted alone? On the night that he killed my brother? Yeah. 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 Now just to kind of clear this up, were Nicole and, and your brother dating? Were they just friends? Uh, they were just friends. My, my brother had a girlfriend at the time and was going out with his buddies that night. So as far as I know and, and believe that he was just there to return the glasses like the story tells. What would you say is the one thing that, that people don't know about your brother? My brother was an amazing human being who who just, you know, was just kind of coming into his own at that point in his life and he was getting ready to present my father with a business plan to open up a restaurant and you know, he was excited at the possibility of, of having his own thing and having some independence. I, I think more than anything, my brother demonstrated who he was the night that he died. I mean, he gave his life up for another human and to me, that's the most valiant and heroic thing that anybody can do and I think that speaks volumes about his character. Do you think that he tried to fight OJ off? Uh, absolutely. I mean, all the defensive wounds on his hand, um, you know, dictate that and I, I think he was overpowered. I mean, he was coming into somebody that was in a rage and had a weapon and it was a small space and I think he did the best he could. Nicole Simpson and Ronald Goldman were murdered by OJ Simpson. June 12th will be 20 years. Ronald Goldman's sisters, Kim Goldman, were talking with her on the phone. Kim, do you hate OJ Simpson? Yes. You despise him with every fiber of your being, don't you? Yes. I don't know how I, I don't know how I, I don't know how I, how not to. I mean, he stabbed my brother to death and nearly decapitated his wife with his children just a couple feet away. Um, but I've also managed to find a good, healthy place for that because I think it's appropriate, but I don't want it to debilitate me and I want to be able to live a healthy life and I feel good about that so far. There's a story out there that you actually had a chance to kill OJ and you didn't. Is there any truth to that? Yes. Um, roughly 17, 18 years ago, um, I found myself in a parking lot in Los Angeles after the criminal cases case ended and he appeared before my car. He was walking by and I, I know it was him. I just remember everything about his walk and his demeanor and I revved the engine for a split second and then realized that there's no chance in hell that I would ever be able to do that and he just continued to saunter by and I went on about my day but yeah I mean of course it was the height of everything and I wasn't I wasn't in a good I wasn't in a healthy space then. What a strong woman you are because yeah. I gotta be honest if somebody killed my brother and then turned it into a freaking spectacle yeah. on television and then got away with doing it and he walked in front of my car I would have ran him and anybody he was with over and backed up and ran him over again. <laughs> How have you been able to deal with this? Like I'm sure you had to been in counseling for years and years. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. I mean, you know, most most importantly is that I, I was thinking about my dad. I mean, my dad had already suffered so much, and I had already lost so much. And I just, at the end of the day, that's I don't I don't have that violence in me as much as you know we all wish it and fantasize. I don't know how many of us would actually do because that's what separates us from from the killers. Oh, see, I would have done it. Honestly, I would have done it. I would have just <laughs> ran his ass over. Well, you know, I I, I just I, I couldn't. That. I mean, maybe I was frozen. I don't have any idea. But I just remember thinking about my dad, and you know, yes, I mean, I. I've been in and out of therapy. I have a great support system. Um, I write a lot. It's healthy for me to do that. And I speak as often as I can. And, and now I have a 10-year-old son that I raise. And, you know, that's important for me to be a role model for him. And, and you know, I would never, I don't want to disparage the memory of my brother by doing anything less than honorable. And, you know, it takes it takes a lot of deep breaths and sometimes a little bit of wine. Would you be upset if O.J. Simpson got killed in prison? No. Not at all. <laughs> Good for you. No. You know what story we heard? We heard that OJ was hanging out with a group of girls. Uh, well, they're called the girls. Yeah. And it's a bunch of gay guys in prison. And that, like, that's the only people that really he Deal can with run them, with. Yeah. Because years ago, he was loved by the community, even after he got found not guilty. As the years have gone by, a lot of people have really changed their opinion on that and went, oh, my God, OJ got away with murder. Yeah. Yeah. And have you heard the story about him hanging out with uh, the group of, of people called the girls in prison? Uh, 
Um, I don't know if I heard that that was what they were referred to, um, that, that I mean, they had a group name. Um, but I, I've heard lots of stories about his life in prison, um, you know, that he was, I heard that he was attacked. I've heard that he lived, you know, a very big life in there. Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he's going to find respite wherever he can. Um, right. I don't, I don't know what it's like for him in there. If you were looking at him face to face right now, what would you say to OJ Simpson? <sighs> Um, I don't, uh, you know, I don't know that anything that I would ever say could ever penetrate him. I know that he has a tremendous amount of hate for us, um, which is totally fine. But um, I think it's just more for me, it would be more of a visual thing and more of uh, me being able to stand tall and let him know that he didn't, he didn't break me. He didn't debilitate me. But being able to walk out of that jail, jail while he gets to sit behind and shackled to a desk, um, that I think would be the most powerful thing that could ever happen. One final question for you before we go, yeah. let you go. Did you feel that OJ, when he got sent to prison this time, did you feel that he got, the judge maybe gave him a little harsher sentence because he got away with murdering your brother and Nicole Simpson? Um, I know that there's a lot of speculation about that, and I guess we'll never know, but she followed the law and she followed the, the maximum sentence that she could give, and I'm totally okay with that, however it came down. At the end of the day, he still broke the law, and um, for someone who thought that he was above it all, I guess I guess he was in for rude awakening that day. He basically got a life sentence sentence for what he did. Yeah. yeah, and considering he's an old man, um, you know, that's got to be tremendous for him. But you know what? He, he had his freedom for, you know, the better part of 15 years before he committed that crime, and he did nothing with it except mock the system. And um, I'm I'm totally fine with karma catching up to him finally and me being able to see it up close and personal. I was just about to say, karma is a bitch, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kim, thanks so much. Make sure you pick up her book, Can't Forgive My 20-Year Battle with O.J. Simpson. It's an e-book right now. Thanks so much, Kim, for hanging out with us. Thank you so much. And that's how it's done. Wake up, wake up. Wake up with Double J in the morning. Weekdays, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. On Power 106.7.